My name is Steve Sarowitz. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a philanthropist, and I'm a filmmaker. I'm 56 years old. I live sometimes in Highland Park, Illinois, and other times around the world. I'm uh, very focused on my faith in philanthropy, and I also do a little bit of business occasionally. C a couple of moments in my life. One moment started in college. Um, I was an engineering major. I mm -hmm. was a bad student. Uh, I was smart, but I really wasn't that dedicated to school. And I switched into economics my junior year. Mm -hmm. And my roommate asked me to go to an entrepreneur's, there was a, an entrepreneur's club. Mm -hmm. And I went to the entrepreneur's club and there was a pretty blonde girl who was mm -hmm. the president. I thought that's pretty good, I like this club. <laughs> but I, I think it was really actually the fact that I liked entrepreneurship that yeah. got me to stay in this club. And, Within a couple months after that, I did my first business, yeah. couple business ventures, yeah. and I started. I got really into entrepreneurship very quickly, and uh, so that was a key moment in my life, kind of, because I didn't know what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. and that kind of opened my eyes to what an entrepreneur is. Wow, isn't that crazy? How just your one friend kind of who just needed that little pull to get you to go, and you went there, and it's just crazy how one person can honestly impact your entire like view on life and just kind of give, give you that little push to go to that club and do that. Yeah, I think it was, I was an accident waiting to happen. Yeah. And people who've had to work with me would say I'm a lot of accidents <laughs> waiting to happen, but entrepreneurs are that way. I, what I, how I describe a true entrepreneur, mm. a normal person, if they see a wall, will wait mm. for someone to build a door, yeah. whereas an entrepreneur just walks through the wall yeah. and someone comes in after them and actually cleans up and builds the door. Yeah, I love that. Like always, if there's a will, there's a way. You can always figure it out one way or another. It's not always pretty uh, working and living with entrepreneurs, as my wife will attest, um, mm. but we are also necessary like mm -hmm. isn't that everyone's necessary well one of my mm -hmm. beliefs is that we're all one human family and each of us has our position in the world it doesn't mean we're better or worse sometimes entrepreneurs in our in our culture are glorified mm -hmm. occasionally vilified yeah. i just think we're all people and we all have our tasks to do and i try to do i try to take the god-given gifts i've been given and use them for the betterment of humanity got it yeah i like when you use the term like Glorified? Do you mean with like with all like the money and having the cars and the house and ever as from what I see from social media of it being like, oh like drop out of your job, be an entrepreneur. You know it's gonna be easy. Just do this and this. Like, how do you view that? Like it's kind of oh, it's yeah, not it's, always it's, it's not all that. It's super easy. Um, any twenty hours a day you want to work, mm -hmm. fifteen to twenty hours a day, um, you don't get paid for a while, mm -hmm. and you can't spend any money because you don't have any money. So it's real easy. And then you of course get a lot of. Uh, challenges, not I'm kind of kidding. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's actually quite difficult, particularly at the beginning. Um, I view building a business very much like birthing and raising a child. Mm -hmm. Childbirth, I've heard, I haven't ever done it, but I, I've heard it might be painful. <laughs> yeah, just, and, just a little bit. Just a little bit. And then raising the child, the child is very needy. So mm -hmm. you're, you're, you know, having a child is, is and, and successfully raising a child is, is a very big task. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think uh, business is the same way, that you really have to be prepared to put a lot of energy into that business mm -hmm. before you get anything out of it. Uh, were you able to see your long-term goal of what you wanted, or was it kind of just something that followed through the way? I'm a little bit of a free spirit, so mm -hmm. I don't think I ever sat down and said, I'm going to do this. I did years ago um, when I was in entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. when I was in the the club in college and I was doing my first few ventures, I kind of saw myself as a very successful entrepreneur and I, and that has come true. Yeah. And actually there was, um, remember there's an article about me when I was still in college, mm -hmm. uh, written by a friend of mine from high school and she said that someday I would come back to christen the Steve Sarah's mm -hmm. School of Business. I have not done that, although yeah. I have given to my alma mater yeah. um, and I, I generally don't put my name on things. Yeah. So I am now giving that kind of money mm -hmm. away. My wife and I are both yeah. very philanthropic. So I guess my answer is yes. I, mm -hmm. I have seen uh, that vision come true and it's allowed me to do a lot more with mm -hmm. my life and to help other people and that's given me great pleasure to be yeah. able to contribute to the betterment of the world. The most important thing is the journey, not, not oh, the goal. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, if, more, if, if you yeah. just, if, let's say everyone just said, I want to do this mm. and instantly you were transformed yeah. and you had absolute success, you know, I want to build the biggest business, mm. I want to be a pro gymnast yeah. or Olympic gymnast. Yeah. If whatever you wanted to do just instantly came mm. true, there'd be no pleasure or yeah. sense of achievement. For sure. so, Setbacks and, mm. and, and, and sometimes difficult journeys are wonderful things because mm. at the end you appreciate the journey. Yeah, it's more about the 
process than the destination. Life is a process, life is a journey, and mm -hmm. it's really the journey of life that's important. The first partner I had, um, it hadn't worked out between us and I had to let him go. Mm -hmm. And I'm, we had a 600 square foot office, mm -hmm. and in one room was my banker, uh, trying to figure out if we were still credit worthy and in the other room because there's only two rooms right. and they were like really there's almost like one room divided yeah. into two. Um, the other room was a network consult mm -hmm. consultant we'd hired uh, who was desperately trying to break into our network because mm -hmm. my former partner had taken the password from us. Mm -hmm. So we literally couldn't run the business and then my wife had taken a day off work that day yeah. to answer the phones because there was no one to answer the phones. Yeah. So from there we hired um, Jennifer Page, who became our head of operations mm -hmm. for many years, uh, we hired someone to run our technology, mm -hmm. and, and from there we just grew, and every person we hired became a, a key person from there. And I, uh, a gentleman by the name of Bill Orr, um, mm -hmm. who I'd worked with at my previous company, so my mm -hmm. my company's the, my most successful company is a payroll and HR company, mm -hmm. and um, I just started hiring the right people, and from that point forward, it was just like a rocket ship. It mm -hmm. just kept growing year after year after year. Mm -hmm. From three employees to nine employees to mm -hmm. 15 employees. Today, that company has over 5,000 employees. Wow. And so, it wasn't an overnight, it's a 24 year, yeah. going on 25 year now, yeah. overnight success. Yeah, I mean, to relate it to running, you know, life is more like a marathon, not a sprint necessarily. It is, yes. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely it's hard to see that, but as you said, just, you know, trust in the process and just realizing what you're doing in the moment is going to be worth it one day, but it's still to enjoy every single second, like, as you go on. So if someone was trying to start up a business of something on their own, but they don't have a team with them. It's kind of, they're young, they're on their own. Because most people say, you know, build a team, build a network. What would your advice be for them to start doing that? Every business is different. Some businesses mm -hmm. are built by one person. Some mm -hmm. businesses are built by a team. I've worked with partners quite a bit. Partners are a mixed bag. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have right now uh, two main businesses that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. One is a UK payroll service mm -hmm. and the initials of my partner are JB. Mm -hmm. um, the other is a movie company, movie, mm -hmm. uh, what's that, that's what happens when you get successful, you yeah. get to do what you want to do. Yeah. So I have a movie and TV production company by the name of Wayfair and my partners and children never guess. Mm -hmm. JB. Wow. So, um, I, uh, I think that that's very good and I have a, a very good friend whose initials are JB as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I, uh, I've been very fortunate with my, I have great affection for both mm -hmm. my partners. Uh, I've been partners in the UK payroll service. We started the big, I, I invested back in 2014, it was doing about 150,000 pounds mm -hmm. a year. Um, now we're up over 3 million pounds a year and still growing very, very well. Um, our movie company is still relatively new, but mm -hmm. I, I'm very bullish on the movie company, probably even more bullish on the movie company. I think we've got a lot of really good people yeah. and we've built a company that's really built on love and kindness mm -hmm. and being genuine. Uh, and really caring about humanity and mm -hmm. people come work there and, and at first they don't even believe it and then they realize no these guys are for real yeah. they really care about what they're doing yeah I think that's really important you know I mean with my channel with what I'm doing you know, I'm all about authenticity and just getting getting to the cut of just like the real stuff no fake and just understanding people who for who they are and I've seen it with businesses when your heart and soul is into it and you know your whole personality and character just starts to develop within it and I think that's what kind of lacks in society. Some people, as we were talking about earlier, just want the money, the fame, and you know, it's kind of hard not, sometimes not want to, but how have you kind of like spiritually like, developed within yourself, within your life, but also applying it to business and family, and filmmaking and your hobbies that you do outside of work? I was raised Jewish. Mm -hmm. I'm currently a Baha'i. Mm -hmm. um, I became a Baha'i seven years ago. Um, both the Jewish faith and the Baha'i faith stress morality. Yeah. And, um, I believe as a Baha'i that all faiths are essentially mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. uh, faith, and so I think the essential uh, elements of my wife's Catholic faith, of mm -hmm. my Baha'i faith, of my Jewish faith from my childhood mm -hmm. are really all one. That we're we're taught in all faiths to love God, mm -hmm. and we're taught to live a, a moral and just life to mm -hmm. uh, love our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And I think we sometimes forget that when Jesus and Moses and mm -hmm. every messenger of God said, "Love thy neighbor," mm -hmm. that they put no exceptions in it. They didn't yeah. say, "Love your Republican neighbor, but mm -hmm. not your Democratic yeah. neighbor," or vice versa, yeah. or "Love your white neighbor, but not your black mm -hmm. neighbor," or "Your male neighbor, but not mm -hmm. your female." Um, if we really understood truly that deeply, that love, just love thy neighbor, mm. and understood the full ramifications of that, 
all war would be gone. You can't, mm. of course, have war with someone you hate. Yeah. Um, all religious, uh, sect sectarian religion fighting, religious mm. fighting would go away. And people couldn't lie, steal, mm. all the things, because none of those things are loving to your neighbor. What would just be a like, piece of advice to someone who's, you know, they have the heart to do it, but they're kind of just almost kind of lost on how to start their business or start their job or what, whatever it is that they want to do? The combination of heart and head is mm -hmm. really the important thing. So always do the right thing. Always do something that's gonna to try to help the world. Follow your heart, but use your head as well. Mm -hmm. So um, have faith, but God gave you a brain, don't turn off your brain. A lot of people, I've heard people say, well, you know, Jesus is gonna save me. And, and yeah. I'm like, well, he maybe gave you an oar to row. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the, it's, it's this idea of science and religion being yeah. in harmony. So let your heart, mm -hmm lead you but also use logic as well mm -hmm. don't run in the middle of highways yeah <laughs> run, run, you know don't jump off bridges um, without a lot of supervision yeah. or at all usually yeah but you know don't be afraid to take a risk mm -hmm. particularly when you're young yeah but try to do try to combine this idea of mm -hmm. logic and reason mm -hmm. and love and this flowing this this heart feeling like mm -hmm. intuition yeah. And so both of them are valid, mm -hmm. and I think they work. Ideally, when they work together, is great. A piece of advice I always mm -hmm. give young people, and this is, I've, I've said this over mm -hmm. and over again, I will continue to, to make this mm -hmm. a mantra, is that do you, well, do you eat every day food, mm -hmm. and do you drink, looks like you drink water? Yeah, I drink my gallon of water a day. And you eat as well? Yeah. Would you go a day without eating? Mm -mm. Or two days, or three days, or a week? No. It's pretty obvious with food and water that we wouldn't do that. Although I'm actually fasting right now, the highest <laughs> fast for 19 days, but I just between Jeez. sun up and sundown. So I, I ate early this morning yeah. and I'll eat tonight. But um, so you wouldn't go without eating or mm -hmm. drinking, but we are primarily spiritual beings mm -hmm. and we go all the time, particularly young people go without feeding your spirit. Mm -hmm. So what do I mean by feeding your spirit? I'm not, again, yeah. we talked about, you don't have to go to church. You don't have to belong to a religion. Yeah. If that works for you, that's great. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work for you, that's great. But Feed your spirit. That mm. could be prayer, mm. that could be meditation, it could be serving yes. humanity, it could be studying the Word of God. It's something to feed your spirit mm. every day. So I'm super impressed with you. Mm, thank you're, you. You're, you're, uh, you've come, a, you're way ahead of where I was when I was in age. <laughs> so I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to thank me. You. Thank you. And uh, you know, I encourage you to keep living your dream. You. So you know, it doesn't matter how many people see your videos. Mm. It matters that you enjoyed making them. Yeah. And I think eventually, if, if, if people are supposed to see them, it'll happen. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the other thing I'll tell you, mm -hmm. is whatever's supposed to happen, eventually will happen. Perfect. You do your part and let God do the rest.